All right, hi. Um, welcome to my talk on uh, how to beat up your friends with frame data and hitboxes. And I see there are some of you already in the chat. Oh, up for just a moment. You were actually baited into uh, attending a Power Rangers Battle for the Grid stream. Yeah, maybe. Well, there's none in Street Fighter, but. All right, so I've got. So let's get started. Uh, so just to introduce myself, uh, I am Arliath. It is pronounced Arliath and not Arliath, but I'm not going to correct you. Uh, I am a Street Fighter V Vega player. Uh, I also play Third Strike, uh, Makoto and Third Strike, and I contribute to a couple of different tools on the internet, such as a Frame Assistant tool, which everyone, I hope everyone has installed if you play Street Fighter V uh, on your phone, but there's also a website. Uh, I'm also a subject matter expert on SFE Sim and sfesim.com slash diff which was developed by this freaking genius named Wid. And then uh, there's also tool assisted utilities uh, that we had to use back in the day uh, when trying to talk to, trying to speak Toaster. And he's got a couple tools that still don't have updates on them, but hopefully they will soon, but they're still very powerful. And so you'll, you'll understand why I bring up these tools in the course of this talk. And also, this is mostly going to be a Street Fighter V oriented talk, but I will also bring up examples from other games. And uh, feel free to feel free to uh, also ask questions from other games, and maybe I might be able to answer them. And no, I am not tool assisted. So why are you here? You are here because. Your time is valuable. You don't have time to, to press every single button in the game and lab everything. And knowing frame data allows you to make your, make your training that much more efficient. And you don't want to be unprepared and caught flat on your feet going like, why didn't that work? I thought this would work every single time. And the worst thing that can happen to you in the middle of a fight is to be, get confused because you no longer are paying attention to what your opponent's going to do next. You're thinking about what your opponent was doing like five seconds ago, right? And you're really here to win. So I have a quote from Conan. Everyone knows it. It's what is best in life. And it's to crush your enemies, see them drift before you, and to hear the lamentations of their sponsors. So the other danger about frame data is that you don't want to be a nerd. You cannot eat a cookbook. If you want to learn how to cook, you, you gotta actually, you know, cook. You gotta, you gotta play your matches, you actually have to get into the lab, you can't just study this stuff. Uh, and knowledge is not a substitute for developing skill, right? And cooking by, cooking by the recipe or only playing by frame data limits your, your game to only what is mathematically right and people who play with that end up being too scared to take risks, right? And they don't understand how conditioning works. So I will go over that as well. And sometimes you're not going to have the optimal, the optimal meter to do the combo you want, but you might be able to, to wing it based on how well you know your own character. And that requires a lot of practice and, and time and training. But we're here to help make that time and training more efficient. So I'm going to go over, <clears throat> the first part is going to be over uh, how to read frame data in a chart. And most of you know this already, but it'll start segueing into the more advanced things. I promise. We're going to use this classic graphic, which was the old, you know, all right, how did the jab work? Now, Ree's jab in Third Strike, I don't even think it was five frames. Uh, but this is a super simplified version of it, right? And you see, you see the three things, the, the three phases, which are startup, active frames, and recovery. And if you look at frame data for old games, it would show that uh, it would be active, uh, or it would be one frame startup. But we are conflating startup and active 
so that we're saying it has two frame startup and it's active for two frames. So this will be, the, so just for the purposes of modern notation, we're just gonna stick with two frames, right? And if you have FAT and it confuses you, you look at, let's look at Chun-Li for example, right? You look at all these moves and it's like, okay, I have a spreadsheet. I have all these numbers. What the hell do they mean? And if you start looking at the columns, you start looking how the data is presented. You start from the top, right? You got your move name. You have startup, active frames, recovery, and on hit and on block. And one of the great things about FAT is that they kind of color coded how plus or minus a move may be. And anything that's up to negative two is still safe because the fastest move in a game is three frame, right? If it's three frame or worse, and it will probably get hit by a light, then it'll be pink, negative three, negative five. If it's negative 12 on block, like the crouching heavy kick, you, you got a problem. Like, you are going to get punished by something real bad, unless your opponent is spaced away or something. But let's look at a move, or let's look at some of this frame data. So for example, Chun-Li has a crouched light kick, and that's, that has three frames startup. That's also, that's also a low hitting move, just so you know. And that's kind of crazy to give a, a three frame low hitting attack. Very, very few characters in this game actually have that privilege. So what's another, so what's another move? You look at like standing heavy kick. That, that's a slow move, you know, it's 12 frame startup, three frame active, 16 frame recovery. You're like, why would you use this? And you have to get into the lab to really test it out, but it also helps to have some, uh, some knowledge into how the hitboxes work. But let's look at Hake. Hake at the very bottom. Oh, you can't see my cursor, huh? Do I have a pen and laser? Yes, I need a laser pen. Yes, okay. So Hake, which is chun -Li's back fierce, seven frame startup, five frame active, and 13 frame recovery. By the way, for crouching heavy punch, that parentheses is a gap in between the active frame. So it's two frame active, 10 frame gap, because she spins around, and then another two frame. But this five frame is really good, and I'll show you why. So if you click on the, the move, you'll, you'll start going into a bit more of the in-depth stuff, such as uh, the startup active recovery. Can, what does this cancel into? This is important, right? Can it cancel into special attacks, supers, V skill, V trigger one, V trigger two? How much damage and stun does it do? Does it crush counter? And you'll see CC state, crush counter state. It's a spinning knockdown. Here's your advantage. You have your KD advantage, quick rise and back rise. And I'll go into that more, I promise. All right. And also the move command. And sometimes we put some extra notes, such as like, is what is it good for? And uh, and this juggle and limit increase stuff, which is also something we'll go into down the line. There, there's a lot to cover. Uh, please bear with me. So just looking at the frame data of Back Fierce, it doesn't tell you a whole lot aside from these numbers. And you have five frame active, right? But is it really good in a fight? Let's see. So let's look at this again. But instead of looking at the frames up here, look, we're going to look at hitboxes down here, right? Don't pay attention to this graphic because it's not accurate. Here we have Chun-Li doing Back Fierce. And it's just a very simplified version of the actual attack, right? But you'll see, you'll notice two things here. The first thing is that um, there's this weird yellow box that's in front of her. And it doesn't actually hurt you. It has nothing to do with the actual hit of the attack. Right? But it's known as proximity guard. And there's a, um, there's a very good use for it that you'll see. But what we're going to look at for now is a strike hit box, right? This, it's that red zone. So this is a breakdown of what the, each of the boxes are for. Right? Anything in green is going to be the attack hurt box. And it's vulnerable to both strikes, which are like the red zone right here, and projectile hit boxes. However, it doesn't count for throws. Because throws must touch you in the center box, this throw hurt box, which also kind of doubles as your collision box. And uh, you can, this is where you push your opponent if your collision boxes hit together, right? 
this foot back here, it doesn't exist. The game does not care that Chun-Li's foot is sticking way behind here because there's no hitbox here. So you have to realize that the way the game works, there is a, a difference between what you see on screen and uh, what the game sees. And also, I will be taking questions um, intermittently and also in Twitch chat as well. Uh, hopefully you can see this. This is what the game sees, and this is the data in SFE Sim. So if you go back, kind of go back and forth, right? You can see how it directly correlates. It's literally the same shapes, right? So we're going to go in an F we're going to show you an example on, on sfesim.com slash diff, which is here. And I will actually show you real fast how we get there. So we go to sfesim.com slash diff, we go to Chun Li. We pick the latest version of the character. And then we're looking for back fears, right? And this was a, a recent 4 HP, or just back heavy punch. This is a recent addition, these, uh, these input things, which allow you to go, oh, OK, well, at least I know how to do the moves. I don't have to know what kakuraku and yokusen and senenshu and, and stuff means, right? And then we have the scripts and how the input is done and some other stuff. But what you really want to see is this, right? And as you advance in the frames, going one, two, remember it has seven frame, uh, seven frame startup. So these first six frames are just nothing, right? And on frame seven, you magically have that appear. Wait. Oh, I just realized that um, you couldn't see me doing the whole website on the screen because PowerPoint was taking it over. Anyways, uh, I'll move that. So over here, we have, if you scroll down, on sfesim.com slash diff, there's a whole bunch of crap. This is a god awful complex as hell cancel list, right? And you're just like, every single move you can do, they can cancel into from back fears is listed in here. And there's two types of cancels. Here, let, let's break this down, right? You have cancel 32 and cancel 99. And you can input 32 and 99 like from like the second frame of the move, like super early on. Right? It buffers this entire time, but it doesn't actually execute until way later, right? which is why it's spaced over here. However, when you V-trigger cancel, it activates much earlier, and that becomes important later on. Right? And if you go into, for example, see where it says effect 80 right here uh, over this part? If you clicked on that, for that particular hitbox, you get to see the date, like all the actual data of the move, how much meter gives you, um, how long the game freezes for, which is really important for some, uh, for certain purposes. Uh, over here, we see we see that the game freezes for 15 frames on uh, on a normal hit and also on a guard, right? And later on. Uh, I will also talk about why this ends up becoming important as well. So let's look at a couple other attacks real fast so that you understand what you're looking at with hitboxes. Uh, so here's Guile's Sonic Boom. And everyone knows about the hitboxes so far and what a projectile hitbox is. Although I bet most of you didn't know that Guile's Sonic Boom was this skinny. It's, it's tiny. It's just like this gigantic thing over here. This does not exist. This is actually taken from real time from the game. I didn't overlay these boxes, right? Guile's Sonic Boom is actually does not start over here. It's somewhere like maybe four fifths of the way through. And if you jump, neutral jump, and land in the front part, it doesn't do anything to you. So don't be too scared of that part. And then you've got these, these red hurt boxes. Like, what the hell are these? And these hurt boxes are strike only hurt boxes. And this doesn't really seem significant at first, right? But this can't be thrown, obviously. But it also cannot be hit by projectiles. So if Ryu threw a fireball coming over here, and Guile does a sonic boom at the very last second, these red hurt boxes don't get hurt at all. His arms, when they, when they swing out, um, 
they, they're they completely invincible and it allows the sonic boom to collide with it and keep them safe. However, if you're trying to poke him low, like with a sweep or something, his foot right here becomes really vulnerable to doing things like that. So that's why these exist to help balance out uh, excessively good projectiles. And if you're also, if you're having problems with characters like that, um, and you're not sure whether or not your fireball invincible move will hit, have a little bit of faith because there are, like Sagat's fireballs, for example, his arms just sticks out all the way over here. In fact, I'm going to uh, show you real fast and also take questions real fast, but I will show you just how good or how, how far Sagat reaches out when he does a tiger shot. Let's just wing it here, okay. Um, a ground tiger shot. So right here, even though we don't see the actual tiger shot out, you know, his arm sticks out. It's not the full length that you would expect, but it's out there. And what's important is that this part shows the star, which is a fireball, because there's no fireball emoji. And this, uh, and this punch here, this, uh, this fist, is a, a strike hurt box. The hurt box that we're looking at is the one out here, right? And this is a strike only, but fireball invincible hurt box. It's not colored red in SCB SIM diff. However, what do we got here? Oh wait, that's right. I can slow the game down. I, I literally have matrix powers due to FTV hitbox here, frame trapped, which you can get at frametrap.com. Because Vega has a very good anti fireball move. Blah, blah, blah. All right, I might have messed up. Because also, in order to use this tool, you have to run Steam in administrator mode. So I need to shut this down. Uh, well, in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll demonstrate real fast. I always forget to do this. Oh, it's guard recovery. Whoops, I have to set wake up actions. Did you see how far that hit? Like, I'm literally halfway across the screen. And it still managed to hit. And it's because I hit that extended hurt box that was way out in front, right there. And let me quit this game and load everything up real fast. Hopefully, I don't break my uh, break my presentation here. Also, in order to run this, you have to run Steam in administrator mode. And the easiest way to do that actually is when you open when you when you're about to click Steam. Oh, you also I also have to quit Steam, right? Did I quit Steam? I did quit Steam. If you hold left shift on your keyboard and then you right click, you can run as administrator right here. And this is a huge help, right? And this allows frame traps to run with the necessary privileges to get the, all the hooks in the game in order to, to start drawing things on the screen and everything. So in the meantime, oh, we're already up. Cool. Get to see all the games I never played.
How much time do we have? All right, 20 minutes have gone, though. While that's loading, let's load up frame traps. This also requires administrator privileges. I have not actually played 2,500 hours of this game. I just, you know, fell asleep while I was running. I could. I really could. Wait, let's see some magic here. Unfortunately, this is not for the PS4 version. This is only for PC. Oh, hey, look at that. We have, we have hurt boxes. Let's, let's do that same scenario, right? Uh, unfortunately, when you slow the game down, you're not going to be able to properly do, it, it really messes with the game logic. But I'm just going to show you that red hurt box I was talking about when you do uh, Sagat's Tiger Shots, right? Oh, look at that. Look at that arm over there with the red, with red hurt box. Also, you notice something about his head. Did you notice that his head has a red hurt box also? It makes fireballs go over his body. That's why he's able to counter fireballs with a low EX tiger shot. Like a lot of people are just like, oh, wait, what? And it's, this also applies to the normal tiger shots. It's not limited to EX, right? Oh, I already, the reason why that came out right there, by the way, I did a, a short tiger shot, right? I can throw another, another tiger shot, but now I can't throw a third tiger shot because two projectiles cannot be on the screen from the same character at the same time. I don't know if anybody remembers Street Fighter Four, the very first version of it, when uh, Ryu was able to throw a, like a jab fireball. And if you try to neutral jump that fireball, then he could just cancel it into Shinku Adoken, and you land on top of it, you die. Right? That, that was cheap. And so it, if it goes off the screen, it no longer exists. I thought the second fireball uh, no longer actually exists. I know it visually exists. Yeah, visually it still exists. So also, it's a really good tool to look at uh, your moves in slow motion if you want to do so. But let's speed this back up. And let's, uh, let's do that same scenario real fast, right? Set wake up actions. And you can see that Vega also had red. He also has a, uh, a red hurt box, or red hurt box the entire way, which meant that he was projectile invincible. Let's see it right again. So yeah, you, you'd be kind of surprised about which moves actually have those kinds of properties. And the other thing to note is that when you jump, the very bottom of your body has a projectile invincible hurt box to allow you to, uh, to not fall on top of fireballs as you're about to land on them. But they are still hit vulnerable, which, allowed, which was kind of partly responsible for all the shenanigans in season one, where you could just jab people in midair as they're jumping in. But some moves actually have a reduced hurt box when, uh, when they go in for the bottom part, right? And Sagat's jumping roundhouse kick is a really good example. And let's look at that real fast in Frame Traps. Or uh, on, uh, on SFE Diff before we move on. And also take questions real fast uh, right afterwards. 8HK, which is jump eight in uh, Japanese notation, or numpad notation would be vertical because eight is the very top. So here's our normal hurt box right here, right? And then when you hit frame 12, it shrinks. This is actually a buff in season four for Scott. And they made it a better jump in by reducing the vulnerability on the bottom in order to anti-air him. So this becomes a much stronger uh, jump in for him at pretty much every range. Like the range is really good. 
But the fact that they took this away makes like, I got hit with this so many times when season four came out and I was like, I'm anti-airing you, what the hell? And it's because I was really aiming for this hurt box over here and now it's shrunken. And there's a couple other moves that allow you to do this kind of thing. Like, and if you've ever played against me, I might have done this to you. Vega's jumping medium punch has an even better version of this because his disappears entirely. And I'm gonna show you a short clip. This made the rounds on Twitter. And this is exactly how I managed to win this particular match. So right here, he activated V-Trigger, and I'm like, oh, he's gonna uppercut, right? So I'm like, I need to figure out a way to get my feet out of the picture so he can't uppercut it. Because I'm still traveling forward, so hopefully, maybe, I can get past this stupid uppercut that's about to own me, right? Ugh, I made it. In fact, the frame before, I actually should have been hit here. My hurt box, if I had not done jumping strong, would have still extended out here and this corner of the uppercut would have clipped me. But no, I managed to scrape by with like barely pixels and I get the win. That was absolutely intentional. I did not do, I did not execute the move. Let's look at it one more time. I did not execute the move until he activated V trigger. And then I'm like, okay, now I gotta do something. I start mashing on strong. But it, does, it takes a couple of frames for me to get rid of my hurt box. So I have to do it early. And then it goes away, right? And the other thing that it does is it shifts my hurt box forward. And I'll show you another move that can do that and also how to apply this. There's another move that allows you to, uh, so not only did it take away my, my bottom hurt box, but also took away, uh, it also shifted my body forward, right? Another character that can do that is Dictator. His jumping medium punch. And most jumping medium punches in Street Fighter V are actually designed to be anti-air air moves, right? Uh, where you meet in, in the middle of the air and you hopefully win, right? So this doesn't have any shift, you would think. But the, the, true, the truth of the matter is, this should be back here. Like, this whole box is already shifted on frame one. The moment you press this button, you're already teleported slightly ahead in space. And there's a really, really good application of this. Oh, is it still slowed down? No, I thought I sped it back up. Oh yeah, it sped back up. It's just the game being slow. Okay. And if you have questions, um, get them ready. I'll show you one more thing real fast. Akuma has a real good super. It does a, an insane amount of chip. And a lot of times, you know, they'll, they'll do it raw, right? But there's a way to get out of it uh, if you're really close. So I'm gonna try to jump forward. That's because I jumped forward early, right? I'm gonna jump forward on reaction to it. Now I'm gonna hold up forward. Okay, actually, it worked for him. If I'm a little back here, I'm gonna jump forward. Okay, actually it turns out Bison is a really good jump. I didn't account for this. I'm, gonna, I'm about to get hit here. Yeah, I got hit there. If I use jumping medium punch, I can use the warp, that warp feature of jump strong in order to get out. Although now you know that a lot of characters can actually jump forward uh, and get out of that situation. For Vega, he's not able to jump out that range. 
uh, at point blank, but if he uses jump strong, he'll be able to escape getting hit by that. Uh, okay, so now time for questions. Anybody have any questions so far? All right, so the question was, does, uh, is, this is this character specific or does every character have this attribute uh, on, their, on their jumps and stuff? And the answer is, uh, it's actually character specific. So if we look at a character like, uh, let's look at Cammy. I don't know whether or not she has this attribute, so, but let's look at jumping medium punch, right? There's no shifts on frame one, and we keep advancing forward, and she just stays in place. So for her, her jumping medium punch, uh, it actually does not have this property. So you kind of have to go you know, through all of your, your character's moves and, and look at maybe, maybe jumping heavy kick has it or not. No, doesn't look like it, right? However, look at that. Like, look at how, look at the bottom of a hurt box and how it just completely just shifted up and just disappeared, which makes it a really good jump in at uh, longer distances. So, you know, you'll, you'll learn a couple things here and there when you look at your characters like that. Um, any other questions? Very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, All right, so I'll recap for, uh, for the stream. So uh, a gentleman uh, by the name of Brooklyn uh, might have asked, so what if we balance Minot, for example, when she throws her orb out with her heavies to have projectile status until the very end, and uh, you know, for for moves that are projectile invincible, like Alex has, what uh, ex stomp? Yeah, ex stomp would not get hit by the orb on the way in. Uh, and you know what? That's that's not a bad uh, question. That's that's not a bad uh, criticism or a balance change to make. Um, yeah, most most characters do not have uh, completely invincible, not tied to a hurt box attacks when they stick out. And it is, it is pretty nuts for that to happen. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on. Oh, one more question. So you're about to bottom strike her box. Okay, so Fox low shot trading. So, so you think that it would ben so it would balance her better if sh she was only able to hit. So only her could hit those strike hurt boxes with her projectile. Just the low shot. We might have to, we'll, we'll table this one. We'll, we'll have to go into this a little more in detail. All right, so let's look at the different other types of attacks that are out there. Uh, in fact, I kind of got ahead of myself with the, with the hurt box shifting and stuff, but uh, that, that's what happens when you, get into, when you go deep into nerd data. So here's an example of an attack that has a hybrid hitbox and, or strike hitbox and projectile. Right, this move actually nullifies projectiles, but still hits as a normal attack. And that means you cannot use projectile invincible moves against it because it still has a perfectly valid strike hitbox. Right? There's one other thing note, uh, to note about this move. He doesn't have that throw hurt box anymore. He, Vega is actually completely throw invincible when he does this move. 
here is a throw. So whenever you see blue, right, that's a throw uh, hitbox. And Bison has arguably the best throw in the game, the best normal throw range in the game, extending from his body. That, that thing is huge! Like, what the hell? Like, I have tried to shimmy Bison so many times and then just get thrown out of it because I did not move far enough. And this is a big reason why. It's, it's, that's how he has no walk speed, so he kind of actually needs it. And also, when he throws, his body does not move forward and shift forward. It just stays in place. So that's also why they made it move forward so far. And it has to connect with your opponent's like internal yellow box here, this, this throw hurt box, right? So let's look at another move. This is Zangief's aerial EX360. Where, you know, the, the, the Air 360 EX pile driver. This attack type is not a throw. It's a strike. It's also really huge. And it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you do this, right? Like, this, this looks insane. But let me, dolls and players might know this, might, might know this pain. Let's see what happens. Let, let, let's go back and watch that again. I think my game kind of, uh, or the presentation kind of messed up. All right. Like, how did that happen? Like, I, I don't know if, it, like, I, I have seen this happen with dolls and players, and they're like, how? How did this happen? It's because it's a grab. All right, it's not a grab, it's actually a strike. He is this far across the screen, and his hurt box on the tip of his foot collided with this actually invincible hitbox in front of him. You, you can't challenge it. It's, it's actually impossible. You're not getting past his hurt box in order to hit him back here. It's just not happening, you're done. Yeah, it could have, like, it, like, yeah, he, even if he jumped back, he still would have gotten clipped by this. So, like, when you're jumping away from Geef, don't press the button. Don't, don't, just don't press that button. Just jump back. Keep your hands off, keep your right hand off the buttons. You're not going to win. All right, that's, that's, that's a free tip for me, right? All right, so there is a time to use frame data and there's also a time not to use frame data. So conditioning is really important. Uh, characters with vortexes. Uh, Alex and Laura are really good examples of this, are examples of how do we, how do we make our, oh damn, we got someone actually snoring in here. <laughs> I wish I could get the camera on them, but I won't, I won't put them on blast. So anyways, um, it is really important to use conditioning, for example. Um, you make your opponent respect the math before you start going ham on them, right? Let's look at Alex, for example. Oh, he stopped at point. Uh, thank you. Come on. The slideshow is still active? Yes, I need to disable those. Okay, we're back. And I'll have to show you, I'll have to show you a bit how the math works here. Normal recovery. Oh wait, I had him doing a super on wake up. That, that's the galaxy brain right there. So this works because uh, of priority and also because of timing, right? So Akuma is trying to keep me from doing this, right? Because truth of the matter is, I'm plus 15. Alex is plus 15 after he does this. His dash is not 15 frames. It's not 17 frames. It, it's a significantly slower than that. So when he dashes in, oops. 
negative four. It's so that's that's a nineteen frame dash. Um, you have more than enough time to hit him before uh, before he's able to grab you, right? Hence why you start conditioning people with a move like that, which hits meaty every single time, no matter what. And once he respects that part, then only then maybe should you start going in for the more fraudulent stuff. Right. And that's just one example of why you don't want to rely, rely on, on frame data too much. Right. You, sometimes you gotta, you, gotta get, you gotta get your hands dirty. And we won't have time, nor do I have enough material to go over some of the more advanced stuff, but I'll start showing you some supplemental material that I came up with. Um, but first, I need to talk about Okizeme. So what happened in that situation was Alex got a knockdown, right? Uh, let's see here. This is tool-assisted stuff right here. It, it looks really crazy. I, I assure you, you can still use it for some things. So in this instance, we have... Hopefully you can see this on stream too, but I'm gonna blow it up a bit. Let's knock down with a power bomb. All right. And as we see here, power bomb is 15 frame on on knockdown recovery, like the quick rise, right? And it's also the same on back rise because in Street Fighter V you cannot back roll a throw. It's the exact same timing. If you don't get up at all, you're on the ground for 64 frames. So let's map that out. And right here, we have it conveniently mapped out where on frame 16, your opponent is now able to do things. So if you try to dash in, dash forward, right? You can see just how much extra time there is before you are allowed to do another move, such as a power bomb, another power bomb, right? So your opponent can do a nine frame move, is that right? Literally a nine frame move before your power bomb is gonna get them. So, so. Yeah, so, uh, so someone said uh, that's kind of why they had to give them a five frame EX in order to put, you know, uh, in order to lock that down. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta put the fear of God into them, right? So standing heavy kick has 17 frame startup. Like you could literally smoke a cigar and tie back your headband before that move becomes active. But guess what? It hits on the second frame of your opponent's wake up. There's nothing they can do to challenge it with a normal attack. It, it, there's just, there is no two frame heavy attack. It's just not happening. And so you can use, this is how you use this tool, which is toolassisted.github.io slash oki. Right there. Uh, in order to, and I'll also post this on Twitter, uh, in order to map out, you know, uh, it, it's a really, this is a really neat visual tool. It, it sh lets you sh uh, align what frame you can start doing weird stuff, right? And this is how you start coming up with Okizeme tools or Okizeme setups. So I know Vega really well, right? And so Vega, uh, for example, when he does, um, the heavy roll, right? And then he whiffs a throw. And then he does a bare hand crouching heavy punch. It's a four frame active move, and this is important. Because when they quick rise on frame three, because remember a three frame jab is the fastest jab in the game, right? They try to challenge you, they get hit. It trades on frame three when they quick rise. If they back rise, it hits on frame one because it hits meaty. And let's go back to that one graphic of Ryu doing, doing this, right? And you'll notice that there are two active frames, right? There's, it, there's frame, the first active frame and the second active frame. There is this gap here, four frames, where your opponent is stunned, 
and that is your that is your advantage on hit, right? But if you hit on this second active frame instead, this whole, uh, I need to turn the laser pointer. Uh, this whole bar shifts over by one. And so instead of four spaces here, you actually have five frames where you have advantage. And that's the same, that's the same principle as why uh, that media attack for Okizena on a, on a back roll works so well. So what, so what do I get out of this? If, it, if they back rise into my crouching fierce, I get three extra frames of hit advantage. So what's what, so what do I get from that? So crouching fierce is what plus five on hit. So I now get plus eight. Is that right? Without a counter hit. And so when you look through your character's frame data, look for moves that have four frames of active. And this means that, again, when you're going against a character that has a three-frame jab, you can, you can lock them down unless they, unless they do a Galaxy Brain move like a Quick Rise Wake Up Uppercut or, or Parry or something, because Parry's are three frames, right? But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's do back recovery. And right, now let's do quick recovery, record a jab. Whoops, all right. That's counter hit, right? Back recovery. So I said there was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I should have ten frames to do something here. That's a seven frame move. That's a nine frame move right there, right? Even. Even if I hit as a counter hit, I can't combo it twice because I'm only plus seven. Plus five on normal hit, plus seven on a counter hit. And it's because I hit really meaty with that move that I was able to get the advantage right there. It was like plus 10 advantage or something crazy. So that's how, that's how meaties work. And that's what you want to look for when you do uh, Okizama setups. Like if you know your opponent cannot back rise in a certain situation, then maybe I want to uh, adjust this here and make, and make it hit on this first frame of the quick rise. Right? If I know that they're not gonna back rise, that means I need to kill 19 frames. I need some, what's called a frame kill. So I need to look at moves that use up 19 frames and it doesn't really have any, unfortunately, which is a shame. However, I do know that Vega's jab is like 10 frames uh, total. So I can mash it twice and still get that. Oh, I still have counter hit on, whoops. And I still got a meaty crouching fierce. So that's that's how meaties work. In case you know you, you didn't get the memo on that. Man, I have so much other stuff, but I am also running low on time. Uh, we also have there's attack priority, cross up and no cross up. Let's talk about cross ups real fast, right? Let's look at this. This might blow your mind. I don't know if you've ever fought against Guile. So I want, you to, I want you to figure out what the difference is between these two flash kicks. Let's play it again. Flash kick one. Flash kick two. Does anybody know what the difference was? No, I, I didn't press a button. Bison did not press a button in here. No one knows. All right, nobody in chat knows either. So I'll tell you the difference. Look at the V-trigger. Look at the V-trigger bar. That 
That was a V trigger EX flash kick. V trigger two, to be precise. But the normal EX flash kick can't hit cross ups. And I'll show you the data inside SFV sim that lets me see why that happened. Let's go to Guile, right? Let's look at uh, VT2 Somersault EX, and let's look at Somersault EX. It helps to know the real names of the moves sometimes. So Somersault EX. You see right here, let's, uh, let's make this bigger. So these are, her, these are the hitboxes, right? Going, he, he's, he's blasting off into space, right? And right here, real important, let me zoom in. Real sad, a bit hard. Oh shoot, this is a problem. Okay, right here, can't hit cross up. Can't hit cross up, can't hit cross up, can't hit cross up, can't hit cross up. VT2 somersault. Can't hit cross up, can't hit cross up, can't hit cross up. That flag is gone. It can hit cross-ups now. So Capcom intentionally, when they design moves, flag it as this cannot hit cross-up. It's not instead of the other way around. So back in the day, they didn't have this flag, and all moves could hit cross-up by default. In Street Fighter V, it's the exact opposite. They don't, they don't want shenanigans like cross-ups to happen. So for example, I don't know if you played Third Strike, but Alex in Third Strike was able to do some shenanigans with his stomp, right? Well, what's a stomp called in this game? Um, stampede. Air Stampede. Yeah, 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 thank you. So Air Stampede, right? So I was really sad when I learned that Air Stampede could not hit cross up, right? You see right here? Uh, can't hit cross up and can't hit people in midair, right? If this flag did not exist, you could actually do some dirt, like knock somebody down and then do, a, do like a full screen cross up, like a cross up stomp, and they have to block the other way. That would be, that'd be some crazy mix up. So no, they didn't give that to them, right? So, um, so you, have to, you have to actively look to see whether or not your move can hit cross up or not. Let me give you another example. So, Here's an example of something that's meaty and cross up. Let's look at that again. Or actually, I'll do another character. So the reason why that was able to hit was Vega's doing a meaty, cro uh, meaty critical art, right? And his super does not have um, the cross-up flag, or the, the no cross-up flag active on it. I'm gonna have to go, by the way, I'm gonna have to go over time on this. And I'll just do it again. I, I mean, maybe 10 minutes, but I can do it on this thing. Okay, all right, screw it, we're doing live. Um, let's look at, I'm gonna be on this until they kick me off then. Let's look at Vega. Critical art, critical art. Uh, oh my god, this is getting crazy. Claw, C, A, F, because I'm just looking at the down forward, down forward punch. Any punch. Hitbox. Right here. There is no cr anti cross up flag. Which means. And do this. Whoops, let's do that again. I get a free cross up off command grab because Zangief's body is really big. There's not a whole lot of characters that have supers like that or moves like that. But if your character does have one, you know, maybe mess around. Just look at, go, go into your character's frame data and see if they have moves that can actually hit cross up like that. You, you'd kind of be surprised. At we can come up with. Um, one thing that always gets me 
is Laura doing a heavy bolt. Uh, is it this one? I think so. Because, you know, it's this anti-air move, right, that goes up. But whenever, as Vega, I try to like swipe it out of the air, crossing her up with, uh, with Barcelona, um, it doesn't have an anti-cross-up flag. So it can hit from behind and still grab my limbs. If you have a cross-up attack and you're going over her and, you're, and your move goes out, like birdies jump fierce or something, or jump, uh, the down medium punch, right? She can still hit because it's a hit, it's not a grab, and it can hit cross-up. So that's why that happens. Uh, what's another thing to look at? Someone says, so you can use flag to counter Nick Hertz? Uh, I, I think they might have had a typo there. All right. Here's another thing. Remember when we talked about proximity guard with uh, Chun? This part right here? So this proximity guard makes certain characters with projectiles actually kind of, kind of dumb. All right. Actually, this is a really good example. Uh, so Sonic Boom. You ever notice that you cannot walk back from a sonic boom when you're like halfway across the screen and you're like, but the sonic boom's not here yet. What the, what the hell? Like, why am I getting locked down so hard? And like, look, th this, is a, this is key. Proximity guard is key to Laura's pressure. As long as that is, as long as it's crossing over your body, I, I think it's the, uh, the collision box you are not allowed to walk back. And that means you have to backdash or jump back in order to get away from her. And that's how Laura players do the whole like dash in and then um, point blank overhead because they think you're too scared of getting command grab so you jump or you try to backdash and then you get nailed. So look at that. Like, and it lasts for so long and you can't do any, it just completely takes away all of your mobility. So. If you're wondering, like, all right, well, why can't I do anything in this situation? It's because of those proximity. It's because of proximity guard. Let me cover some uh, something else. Let's see here. Some other supplement material that I came up with this for this. Um, oh, here's a good one. Oh man, I, I, all right. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited for this one. So, uh, I don't know if. Uh, you've been in situations where you're almost stunned, right? And your opponent, and your opponent goes, okay, um, I'm gonna hit you with a media attack, and then he cancels on the V trigger, right? And you're like mashing on V reversal, and then they counter you, and like, how do they do that? Well, guess what? If you hit V reversal too early, like, if you're mashing it when this move touches you, what this ends up doing is that the very next frame becomes uh, canceled into, your, into their V-trigger. You're already giving away the fact that you were doing a V-reversal because of this stance shift. It's even more obvious if you're crouching. All right, very few people know about this. If you're crouching, it's even crazier. Do you see how drastic this change was? Look at that. And it happens during the dark frame, right? So you're like, I know I hit them with a crouching attack. Why are they standing? It's because they're about to V-reversal you. And then Abigail can get a free parry or command grab. And uh, there's one character that I know of that has a move where uh, there is a cancel delay. And this is a real match that I recorded, right? There's, so she has a move. Her crouching medium kick actually doesn't cancel into V-trigger right away. It cancels into V-trigger really late. Watch what happens. Multiple frames of that V-reversal came out before the V-trigger activated, which means that Colleen can bait your V-reversal every time, and she has a one-frame counter with EX counter if you don't, if, if you forgot. So she gets to own you for free if, if she gets you in a situation where you're like at 95% stun and she knocked you down. 
and you're like, oh my God, I have to be reversal to get the hell out or I need reversal to get her off me. And she hits you immediately with a crouching medium kick. You V reversal, you're dead. You're, you're actually dead. And all right, let's look in the data for that because I just showed you what, what it looks like in game, right? You, you don't need to know. You already know what, it, what the counter looks like. But what does the game see for the counter or for the crouching medium kick? I made like a half hour video on this and no one ever watched it. It's on, it's on my YouTube somewhere. And also, uh, shoot, I seem to have completely lost all graphics on this. Let me close this and reopen uh, Chrome. I think Chrome totally just borked on me. Oh, I, I do have a YouTube. Uh, it is. Just our life. Here's Colleen. Here's her crouchy medium kick to MK. Remember that weird cancel list I showed you earlier? So cancel 36 is her normal V trigger start, right? Because normally you can only cancel this into V trigger or actually critical art? Can you cancel this in critical art? C A L? I didn't know that. Oh, you can also cancel into super. Hold on. Let's look at FAT real fast. Whoops, wrong character. Wrong K. Okay. Crouching, medium kick. Cancels into super, V trigger one and V trigger two. I actually didn't know you could cancel crouching medium kick into super. Hey, there you go. But anyways, let's go back to the cancel list, right? VT2. Do you see how far ahead? Okay, so this move ends on frame 10. Okay, so it's eight frame startup, eight, nine, 10. Okay, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It doesn't start till frame 15. When the V, you execute the cancel list right here. You can input the, crowd, the, the V trigger cancel from crouching medium kick on the second frame, like before the move even hits. And then the game waits and waits and waits and waits and waits. And then well after the move actually activated, that's when the V trigger comes out. And that's why you see, that's why you see this happen. Like a forever and a half until that happens. And that's why if you ever try to V reversal that move, she has more than enough time. And is this feels, I, I think this is somewhat unintentional. It seems like they didn't want her to have crazy uh, frame advantage on a crouching medium kick cancel to V trigger two. And we can actually check that in FAT, maybe. Oh no, it's not in here. It might be in the, uh, in the app itself because I think you don't get all the data on, um, uh, on the website. This is a problem when you start going in depth on things. Okay, so, uh, so Brooklyn has looked it up on the app, and he says that uh, it's what, negative four? At max, but normally negative two. Crouching, medium kick. Okay. Um, so they didn't want her to be able to get a combo off of crouching, medium kick, cancel. Where's Colleen? Oh, it's plus five? Okay, so she can't get like a fierce or anything off of it. Okay. Yeah, it didn't, didn't count. Let me do uh, after first attack. Yeah, it's too slow. They, they did it on purpose. They, they did this in an effort to balance the move, but it has the unintended effects of allowing you to be able to pull off a bait for V reversals. 
And so, you know, sometimes Capcom doesn't know everything. You know, not everything is intended. That, that's where you get some of your dirt from, right? Did I have one more thing for this? No, it doesn't look like it did. Okay, so that, that was all the, like, the supplemental stuff that I had. Um, man, we, there's just not enough time to go over everything that I wanted to do. Object durability, um, I don't know if you know this, I'll just talk about this real fast, but uh, Ibuki's Kunai uh, is actually a physical, or the EX Kunai is a physical hit. It's not actually a projectile, and it has infinite durability. And Rashid's um, V-Trigger, uh, the Isar, the, the giant tornado, right? It used to be a projectile, used to be. And then they're like, you know what? That's too good. We're gonna make it like this, this hybrid, uh, th this hybrid uh, physical attack. But there's a problem because physical, physical projectiles, I hate to say projectile, physical objects, they have a durability attached to them. All right, this, this looks crazy, right? There's this purple zone behind him, and that purple zone is the, uh, the part that, when he's overlapping in it, any of his special moves get boosted, right? That's why he's able to do the, the crazy spinning mixture stuff, right? And then the red zone is actually overlapped with a projectile hitbox, so it's a hybrid. But this is a physical object. You cannot use fireball invincible moves from it. I can't use, I can't use EX Rita, okay? What I can do, let's do that again. All right, the problem is I have him mashing too much. And this is also eating up like, <laughs> Let's do this. And I'll just have him stay still, right? There we go. I don't have to jump. All right, so the game paused for a quick second. I have to use a cluster for night. Oh, it's gone. What the hell happened to it? So if you, so her, her EX Kunai has infinite durability and it just punches right through and then the explosion afterwards uh, counts as another, as another hit. Oh, it didn't work here because I ran into Kunai. And so this EX Kunai can actually also take away things like uh, banana peels and cans from Birdie. And if any other characters have physical things that they can throw, you can just get rid of them. You're just like, screw it, I, I don't want to deal with this. Bam. That's why, that's why Ibukis will do this in this matchup. Uh, just EX. Her normal kunai is actually a projectile that you can use projectile invincible moves against. Uh, and it has a hurt box, which is why you can punch it. Right? See, it's the only projectile I know in the game that does that. But EX Kunai is actually a broken move. Like it's, it's actually stupid. Sorry, I got disconnected from uh, Twitch chat, so I might have uh, missed some questions that anybody might have had. Let's see here. All right, it's one time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up with one other thing that uh, people might not know about. So, oh my god. That hitbox is still on the screen, ah, okay. So speaking of uh, independent objects, right? I'm sure that all of you have like knocked down Mika and she literally just wakes up and just does a raw V trigger and you're like, oh, she's wide open, right? She's wide open for, what, what's the startup on her fast Nadeshko? Let's see here, we have a VT. Our Mika. V trigger, Nadeshko above, 
26 frames, right? So for you got 26 frames, you're like, okay, if I do a move that is done, that attacks and is done within 26 frames, okay? Let's look up uh, Chun real fast, even though a lot of this is out of date. Let me look for a move that has 26 or less frames, around 20, 25 frames. Uh, standing medium kick, okay? So standing medium kick should hit her. Let's see here. Yeah, it should, it should hit her and then I should be safe, right? Mathematically speaking. Uh, no more uh, record wake up action, start. All right, so 26 frames before that's supposed to come down, right? Oh wait. I did it, right? Okay, cool. I got hit. Like, what happened? And it's because Nadeshko is an independent object. And what's really going on is it ignores hit stop, the time when the game freezes. So let's see here, standing medium kick, 5MK, right? So standing medium kick, we look at the effect here. Remember I said we go back to this? There's a hit freeze of 12 frames. So not only do you have 25 frames total for this move to execute, you're also stuck for 12 frames. And both you and Mika are stuck for 12 frames. Time stops for you. But it does not stop for Nadeshko. And so that gives Nadeshko 12 extra frames that land on top of your ass and allow Mika to combo you afterwards. Right? It's, it's kind of broken if you think about it. Right? You're like, oh, I got 26 frames to hit her. I, I, I got all my fierces. I can cancel into like some, I can cancel like fierce into EX uppercut maybe. I, I don't know, right? But no, that, that, that hit freeze causes problems. All right, maybe, maybe that wasn't the best example. I think, I think I would have to use like a heavy attack or something. <laughs> that, that keeps you invincible. Fortunately. But yeah, that's that's why you get hit by Nadeshko when you try to meaty her. You're like, oh, she's just sitting here. I, I can do anything I want. But throws actually make you invincible uh, for both players uh, during the during the whole uh, animation of it. So that's 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 an option that you could use. Let's see here. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I have one last thing to show you. Um, and it's about damage optimization. All right, this is very important. I, I've talked about this before on Twitter and stuff, but uh, so in, recently in Street Fighter V, there was a change made to the system mechanics, right? And so um, you have counter hit, which is like 20% extra damage, and then uh, for EX uppercuts, right? Uh, you do additional damage on top of that. But this only applies to one hit, okay? So, so what, what does this mean? This means that the way to optimize damage after blocking EX uppercut is not what you think it is. It's not, let's do some crazy ass combo. Well, it's slot three. Okay, let's look at the damage here. The damage here is 113, okay? Normally, it does 100 damage. So it only did 13 damage more when it did the spin kick because the spin kick is multiple hits. The damage is not front loaded, right? It's spread out, but you only get the bonus on one hit. However, let's do like Fierce is a crush counter, right? So standing Fierce, or no, sweet. Okay, 90 damage. 130 damage. All right, single hit. It's 
163 damage for that combo. All right. And it's normally 134. OK. Now, what if I told you that you could do insane amounts of damage with Akuma if you have meter without doing a combo? Four sixty one. You want to see what this damage normally is? Three twenty. You go from three hundred and twenty damage to four hundred and sixty one. And and all right, let's let's talk about one other thing uh, in regards to this, right? Uh, we're going to do health gauge, normal. Uh, let's see here. OK, I'm going to save right here, right? So if I, let's see here. The, so if I hit him with a fierce, right, it's doing 76 damage. 72 damage, 60 damage, 60 damage, because the less life you have in this game, it's something called gut scaling or guts defense. The less, the less damage, the less life you have in this game, the less damage you take. Sounds weird, I know. But it, it, uh, it's kind of like a last ditch effort for your character to stay alive, like magic pixel stuff, right? And supers that are multiple hit, like Chun-Li's, where she just kicks you a whole bunch of times, scale really badly because of that, right? And so supers that are single hit can do significantly more damage and just bypass that scaling. So it's 304 damage instead of 330, right? Um, and so, um, so if you want to finish someone off, instead of like trying to do a combo that does 330 damage, it's better to just do a super that, that just does a whole lot of damage at once. Um, the, best, the best example, actually, is Balrog and Akuma, I believe, are the only two characters in the game that have a one-hit super. But yeah, they completely, they completely skip all the scaling and, and stuff involved. Let's do Balrog. And let's, where's Kage? Uh, I hate Kage. Let's do it on Kage. I don't, I don't know if you guys are ready for this. Zangief's is a grab, by the way. Somebody asked, uh, what about Zangief? And the problem with Zangief uh, doing 360s as like high damage punishes is that grabs don't get a benefit from counter hit, unfortunately. It kind of sucks. It really sucks. But also the super itself is also a grab, right? Uh, and it's also multi multiple hits. EX Air, Air SPD, I think, when it makes them, it doesn't, it doesn't get counter hit advantage for the same reason. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. So I think, I, I think that's enough damage. That's more than enough. Okay. Uh, how do you do tap? It's okay. Okay. So let's, I'm going to, how long does it take to charge a full scale tap? 60 seconds? All right. OK. Uh, while I'm sitting here and charging, uh, also it turns out you can, you can save your charge uh, while practicing this if you turned on your shortcuts. And I can just reload and just hold the buttons and still maintain that charge, uh, which makes training this a lot easier, right? Do, 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 do. All right. 
I should be close, right? I'm still holding buttons. I'm holding medium punch and heavy punch. All right, I should be good, right? No, that's still not that that's still not max tap. That's still not max tap. Right, you know what? Let's let's do it anyways. Let's let's just run with it, okay? Let's just run with it. Oh shoot. Okay, I need to I need to knock him down. Oh, you know what? Maybe that was a little too much damage. <laughs> so, so if I just do it raw, it's 350 damage, okay? Five hundred and four damage. And it completely bypassed the uh, the gut scaling because it did all the damage in a single hit. So basically, if I just restart the battle, I can actually I can kill Kage in two hits if I do this right. Um, Uh, yes, the, the I believe the damage, the invincible reversal damage only applies to damage and not stun. But basically, the math here, the way the math works out is it's 20% damage for a counter hit. It's an additional 20% damage for EX reversals, but it's not additive, it's multiplicative. So you're taking, you have, a, so you go from 100 damage, 100%, you get 120% damage, and then you add 20% on top of that. So it does more than 140%. It's like, I think the math works out to 144. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's, a little, it's a little ridiculous how that works out. All right, 270. I'm almost there. So, um, so yeah, if you play Balrog or, or Kuma, or it turns out that uh, some new character ends up having a one hit super, just remember that sometimes it just might be better for you to just do like a raw, a raw super and just blow through their, their defense instead of just trying to do a combo. Or this is also, this is also important. If um, a lot of people, instead of doing a crush counter, because this crush counter incurs an additional 20% scaling, right? Instead, Oh, five minutes, okay. Uh, instead, you can do a jump attack and get the bonus from that and then keep going, right? But okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Ready for this? Ah, shoot. Yeah, he's literally, he's literally just one, like, he's one jab away from dying. Yeah, so it's just like, boom, he, he's just done. So, all right, let me quit out of the game. So yeah, uh, sorry for the talk being so unstructured uh, and not having all the material that I, I really wanted to go over. But um, just uh, special thanks to WID for making the uh, SV sim. Thanks to Hatson for helping out with FET, uh, for updating all the frame data. When the new characters come out, he's actually going to be like the main guy that's going to be working on all this stuff. Um, tool assisted for making the first frame data tools to exist. Uh, didn't have time to look over those, but yeah. Uh, Dentarian for also doing a lot of uh, reverse engineering work and helping me out with some of this. And also Cross Counter TV streaming team for putting this on. So yeah, thank you. And thanks for coming.